the Olympic trials. To everyone who showed up, congratulations for having a good season, for being able to hit the qualifying time to be able to line up for this event. Even lining up is something that you're going to be able to hold with you forever. You get to tell your children one day that you went to the Olympic trials and that you competed. This is something that never can be taken away from you. So whether you got the result that you wanted or you didn't, seriously, congratulations. This is always a tough race. If you look at the Olympic trials results from the last 12 years, you'll see that it's not the best race that any individual athlete has had. There have been some breakthroughs where people set PRs in the last race of the season, but you're talking about a very long, emotionally and spiritually and physically exhausting year and the odds of somebody being able to accomplish something that tremendous on the exact last race of the year, it's kind of slim pickings. But if you can do it, that's great, congratulations. But these high intensity races, they're, they're exhausting. And that's kind of why in my last video, I talked about tips and tricks about how to handle your nerves on races like this. Understand that these races are so big and they're so high in energy that they either cause people to become so inspired that they'll spend the next four years training their asses off to become the best version of themselves, or they'll quit, <laughs> they'll just quit. Two weeks to go from the Olympic trials, I was telling Selena that this is when all the craziest things happen. And it's because of the energy that people take moving towards this race. In their minds and in their hearts, they know that it's such a big deal that it becomes a bigger deal than it needs to be. The best way to approach races like this is to treat it like it's any other race. Now, I know for a lot of people in the back of their minds, they're like, oh, but not those. It's not just any other race. It's the Olympic trials. I understand that. I understand what's on the line. But if you put yourself in a situation where you are now in the unknown, you're putting yourself in a disadvantage. You have to change reality to suit you. And that's why mentally, you have to train yourself to think of this as just another day in the office. That's how you produce success. You put yourself in a mental state where you have experience and you've done these actions before. But if you think of the Olympic trials as a level beyond, as something that you've never attained once, you put yourself in unknown territory that you might not be able to adjust to in time. And we saw everything. We saw Olympic champions not make the Olympic team. We saw big upsets. We saw long overdue Olympic qualifications from athletes who deserved it four years ago, but didn't get the chance to make it. I, I have got to say, that I've seen the Olympic trials in 2012 and 2016, 2020, and these. I watched the whole thing, and this has got to be the most exciting Olympic trials I've ever seen. And I followed every single event. Now, a part of me is always kind of wondering if that has something to do with the amount of media. Like, <clears throat> we're living in a world where we've never had so much social media exposure. And because of that, these stories were able to be built way before the races ever went off. We had our main characters that we were all fans of, and we were able to follow along each and every day of the Olympic trials and say, how's my favorite character doing? That's the really cool part about when you get marked Marketing correctly, when, when the news outlets are doing their jobs appropriately, you're following not the talent, but you're following the person. You're following characters that are built over the course of seasons, and you as a viewer get to decide who's your favorite, who do you relate to the most, who do you want to see succeed. But at the same time, that same media can put so much pressure on the athletes to live up to a certain standard that's expected of them. And I feel like we saw that a handful of times where certain athletes really didn't, they weren't, I'm not gonna even gonna say that they didn't step up, they couldn't step up to that expectation because it's too much for anybody to handle. And I would say that it's unfair. Athletes have their own stresses to have to deal with. But for certain news outlets to say, this person is gonna do this certain thing, they're expected to win, they're expected to not only win here, but to go to the Olympics and win the gold. This sport is not like basketball. And this is something that has pissed me off for years, is that sometimes we're trying our best to make this sport be like another sport, but it can't. As opposed to basketball, athletes can come back week after week in those games and still perform well. You can have a good day, you can have a bad day, and it won't necessarily cause you the championship. But the turnaround rate for an athlete is only a handful of races during a certain season. We can't come back week after week without putting ourselves at risk of injury or exhaustion. So when all the hype is being built around an athlete and how much they succeeded at the last track meet, it has no 
no direct linear evidence showing that they're going to perform that well at the next track meet. I'd hate to say it, but all other sports that are done on teams require a certain level of skill. And when your skill is at such a high enough level that you don't necessarily need to practice every day, you can come back week after week and still perform at an above average level. Track athletes cannot do that. It's so explosive in every single event from the 100 to the marathon that the amount of time that's needed to recover and to go back to training to perfect certain things is so much larger than any other sport I've ever seen. If I could compare it to anything, it would be closer to bodybuilding. Like when you're watching Pumping Iron or you're watching the Arnold Classic, you're seeing athletes who are up there and even though they trained all year, they could still not be good enough to compete against the top three athletes that time. It takes years, years for the, if you, if you listen to those interviews, you'll see it takes years for those guys to build the physique that needs to be, and I mean, needs to be perfect, not only in their eyes, but in the judges' eyes. This sport is about longevity. It's not about the hype. It, I mean, there can be hype added, but when the hype overlaps, the sport kind of reveals itself. It's a miracle when somebody talks crap or talks a big game in track and field and is able to back it up. Because I've seen more than a handful of times this year when athletes were talking a lot of smack online and they were not able to back it up. It's a dangerous game to play. To get back to my point, you will see athletes get injured two weeks before the trials. You'll see athletes retire after these trials. You'll see athletes come out of retirement just to be at these trials. You'll see winners lose and you'll see losers win. You're gonna get a little piece of everything. The way that you decide to see the world is what your reality will be. And when you put all of your eggs in one basket and you say that this is the biggest race of the year, in your own mind and in your own heart and your spirit, you have to be careful not to elevate the race to a level at which you cannot reach. That is something that needs that's something that requires a tremendous amount of reflection because you're the only person who knows how nervous you are about this race. And the sad part is that most of us don't really realize it until after the race is done weeks or even months later. I kind of want to say this next part to race walkers specifically, but at the same time, I feel like I need to say it to all track and field athletes across the board. If you had a bad race, at the Olympic trials, if things did not go your way, you are not your bad race. You're not defined by your losses. But I also need you to realize that even when you were winning and things were going your way, that was still not you. You are not defined by your victories either. These are things that you experience. And depending on how you choose to respond to these things will determine who you choose to become. You get to decide whether you wanna get back up and try again for four more years, or you get to decide if you're done and you don't ever wanna to touch the sport again. That is the most powerful thing that the Olympic trials does. Four year cycles, and you have to decide, do I wanna go four more years? It is not an easy decision to make. And I can tell you straight up, it gets harder and harder the older you get. But, 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 you get to make the decision. You don't have to make the decision. This is always gonna be your choice. That's the fun part, is every single day you wake up, you get the choice to go out and to do what you love to do. You don't have to do it. Some people have to go to work. Some people have to do things that they don't want to do in order to pay the bills. But as athletes, we are so freaking blessed to be able to say that we get to do these things. Don't ever lose sight of that because I'm telling you guys, I did at one point and it was the lowest I've ever been. I didn't realize how much my negativity could affect not only my own performance, but my loved ones around me, the people who supported me and who did nothing but shower me with love, I ended up bringing them down because of how pessimistic I was being. And the only person who decided what my reality was, was me. I decided that the world was a sad and dark place and so it was. But if you give yourself that chance to see these Olympic trials as just the start of something beautiful, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how the performance went, if you choose to see it as the start of a new adventure, you guys, these next four years could be the best four years of your life.
but you have to make the decision. It doesn't have to be made today. You can take your time. You can really think about it. You gotta reflect on it because it's a big decision. But if you just start with this, look deep, deep, deep down into your soul and just ask yourself the simple question, do I love to do this? Am I doing this because it makes me happy? Or am I doing this because I feel like I have to do it? That is a very good place to start. I'm gonna be posting the race walk videos that I have. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more talking soon, but I definitely wanted to just take this time to reconnect first and to say thank you guys for all the support. Congratulations to other people who had PRs and who had the successes that they were hoping that they were gonna get. And to anybody who had a bad race, it's okay. More videos from the trials coming out soon. And hopefully as the Olympics approach, I'll be able to make a little bit more content about the actual Olympic race walk events. I can't wait to watch those, especially the 20K. It's going to be freaking wild. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you on the next video. This is Not Those Peace Out. Until next time. Bye.